If you're getting near to retirement and you're not sure if you can fully retire, partially retire, how it works and how to draw down some of your retirement funds while you're working a part-time job, I'm gonna break all that down in this video. For those that are nearing retirement, partial income or part-time retirement income needs to be a consideration for you. And the reason for that is twofold. Maybe you can't afford to fully retire, but you're ready to scale back to some extent. Secondly, a lot of people that enter retirement they feel a little lost. They've lost their purpose and their job and all that. And so maybe going from 100 to zero is not the solution. So if we can scale back and still have a bit of income, still go to work, still keep those connections, for a lot of you, that's a great solution. So I wanna jump into the planning software. I know a lot of you like to see it. So I'm gonna jump into the planning software and show you a 60 year old couple that we had come to us not long ago that wasn't sure if they could retire or maybe partially retire. And if they were looking to partially retire, how much additional income, right? That's the second part of it of, okay, I don't have enough to fully retire. How much money do I need to make to kind of hit my targets for my income projection, not only for the next maybe five years of work, but beyond that as well. So let's look at this client example. So Dave and Ruth YouTube here, they came to us not too long ago. They had a quarter million dollars in his RSP, 50,000 in TFSA, and the same thing on her side. So they had a nice amount of savings. We were looking at kind of the CPP OAS, and they said, we need $72,000 a year after tax, at least in the first 10 to 15 years of retirement. Beyond that, it can scale back, but about $6,000 a month to you know, pay our bills and do the travel and the other things we wanna do. Are we on track? So what we did is we jumped into the software, put their numbers in here and ran it. And here's what we came up with. So looking at their scenario here, again, we put in their assets, we drew down their RSPs, we did the meltdown, we delayed their CPP till 70, that gave them the most kind of bang for their buck and most after tax, both now and later. And the, the highest we could get their after tax income to was $60,341 a year. And again, we ran that down till age 90, which they requested. Now, we could ladder that a bit, but we wouldn't be able to ladder that up all the way until $72,000. 60,000 to 72 is too big of a bump. It would not leave enough later on. We'd run into some issues there. So how much extra do they need to work to hit that $72,000 number that they're looking to have, at least in the go-go phase of retirement. So we played around with the numbers and the end solution that we came up with here is we have a $25,000 income. They're willing to work for about five more years part-time until they're 65. So we put a $25,000 income in here for Dave and the same on Ruth's side. So Ruth has 25,000 as well. So combined $50,000 of taxable income. Now. If we go over, you can see that there's $12,000 coming out of their, uh, their uh, RIF or RSP now, and then it draws up. So we did a bit of a laddered income or, or a, a RSP drawdown on this account as well. Now, if we jump over into combined, you can see that that jumped them. Just having that 50,000 of income for five years jumped their income now all the way to age 90 up to 69,063. So substantial. Now, we're not quite at their $72,000 goal, but we're close enough that I can now ladder that income up to 72, which they're comfortable with and scale it back a little bit later. So let's look at that. So here we have the same scenario with 50,000 of income for the next five years combined between Dave and Ruth. And you can see here that we've been able to ladder up. So they're 72,000. Again, that's after tax in their pocket. And we were able to run that all the way down to age 75. And that's kind of the go-go phase of retirement. Then they slow down to $66,000. And then once they hit 86, they scale back to $60,000. There's a small shortfall in that last year. So it's probably about 59,000 and change in those last years. So again, we were able to get them up to that $72,000 mark by adding in a little bit of income. Now, the question you should have if you're not already thinking it is, okay, but how does the RSP drawdown and the tax strategy work if I keep working? If you're not working, it's probably gonna be a bigger drawdown. Now you have less income like we saw, but there's a slower drawdown if we're working. So I wanna jump into the tax strategy around how to draw down your accounts because 
If you go from 100 to zero, obviously you need to start drawing down your accounts a little bit quicker. But what happens if you go from you know 100 to 25? It's not a full drawdown, it's a partial drawdown. So how do we look at kind of the, the combination of employment income and non-employment income in your RIF account drawing down? First, look at the scenario where they weren't going to work anymore. So if they looked at this scenario and said, look, you know what, Adam, we wanted 72, we'll make 60 work, we're happy with this, we're not gonna work part time. Here's their drawdown. And again, this is looking at about $25,000 per year. This is for Dave out of his RIF account from now all the way down till 68. At 69, there's about 30,000 and then about 10,000 there coming out after. So again, it was just that 30,000 was to meet a bit of a shortfall that year just with inflation, right? We need more money every year. So that was to meet inflation. So that's why that little bump is there. Again, every plan's a little bit different depending on your numbers and scenario. Now, if we scroll down, that $10,000 comes out and the account's emptied by about 81, 82. So that's the strategy. But again, I wanna focus on those early years. We're taking out 25,000. And if we look for Ruth, it's the same number, $25,000 coming out of there. Again, OAS at 65 and CPP at 70 for this client made the most sense. Now, what happens if they work part-time? How much do we take out of the RIF, if any? Do we do 25, do we do less? So we can see with the semi-retirement situation where they're earning $25,000 each year, we're still drawing out $12,000 out of the RIF every year, and then it jumps up to $36,000 and then scales back to 12 once CPP starts. So it's a bit of a different strategy, but again, the tax strategy is very similar and we're trying to get rid of that account by about life expectancy, 85, 86, 87. So the RSP here lasts a little bit longer. We could draw it out if the client was concerned that, hey, you know what, everyone in my family has died by 81. I wanna draw this out quicker. We could do it a little quicker. Now, you can see what we focus on is effective tax rate or average tax rate. While they're working, it's gonna be a little bit higher. Their marginal stays level right through retirement. So good there. So that's kind of the tax strategy behind it. Now, if we're gonna ladder their income and give them a bit more early, does that change the RIF drawdown? Let's take a look at that. So here's the RIF drawdown. You can see 72,000 and 66, and then it goes down to 60. Now, if we look at their RIF drawdown early on, it stays at 12,000. All we're doing is you can see their TFSA is taking a bit more from their TFSA. So again, it, we're using that TFSA as that lever account to figure out how much extra we need. Now, again, your situation is going to be different than Dave and Ruth's situation. Like, how does it work for you? What are the numbers? You need to crunch these with your financial planner. And again, the laddered income for this client makes sense in not taking more from the RIF, not triggering more tax because they have that TFSA account. And that's why I always talk about having a TFSA account later in retirement or early in retirement is very important. You need to build up that TFSA as you get close to retirement because I call it that lever account. If you need a little bit more money, you pull it from there. If you don't, you put it back into there. But it's that tax-free kind of lever pull that you can use to create more income or less income, but not create a bit of a tax bill. So it's a very nice tool to have as you enter into retirement. So if you're getting close to retirement, you're not sure, maybe you don't have enough money, but you're definitely done with your job and you're burnt out, is there somewhere in between that you can kind of work with your financial planner to figure out, does a partial retirement make sense? And how much income for how long do we need to generate to make that work? And again, for Dave and Ruth, we just put like a consulting income. You can, you know, for those of you that are really paying attention here, they're not paying into CPP and EI on this $25,000 of income each. But again, everyone's situation is different. So build the scenario based on your numbers, on your situation, and see what will work best for you, not only for how much income and how long, but how to draw down those accounts tax efficiently.